Good morning. Welcome back to the shop. It's been a couple of weeks because we went to Reno last weekend and we did the sound check video, which you're probably watching. You've probably already watched by the time you see this. It isn't live right now, but it will be by the time this video comes out. Anyway, so today I'm going to try my best to tackle a long standing shop problem that I have had since I pretty much set up. I just did a bad, I made a bad choice on how to set up. So let me show you what I go through to get a chisel. Show you here. So here's where I keep my chisels. I don't know if you've noticed, but those aren't chisels. But the drawer is pretty good size. It's 22 deep and 19 wide. So there's a good amount of space here. But it's also, I think it's about two and a half, three, it's three inches deep inside. And uh, well, there's where the files are, which I'm also hoping to resolve this storage problem with. But here's, I still don't have a chisel. I don't need files, I need a chisel right now. So I have to pull this thing out without dropping the files that are sitting here. And then I lift this, oh, I can't go there. Well, and the router table's full. Frick, where do I put, I just have to sort of precariously not, not drop it. All right, there, there's some chisels, but those are, that's organized, eh? Yes. Oh yeah, by the way, there's more chisels and more organization. These usually go in here and this sits on top of that. So as you can see, this is a terrible system that is clearly not working. I need to solve for this. This is, this is a serious neglecting problem. I've not, I have not done my duty as a woodworker to keep things organized. And so, that is what the plan is today. I want to make, I, one, I'd like, this is a nice box, but honestly, while it's well organized, it's not as efficient as I would like it to be. Um, so I want to get them out of this box because I have more sizes of the same brand of chisels and I want them organized, so we're gonna we're gonna get all of them out of this box and into the drawer in an organized fashion somehow. So I need to figure out what that organized fashion looks like exactly. Um, I have a vision. It might be more of a hallucination, but I have ideas that I want to try, and so that's what we're gonna work through is what it takes to make this dang drawer useful cake knife but uh, bread knife anybody you know if you're cutting foam bread knives are useful it doesn't it's not really a chisel four-in-one rasp file thing uh, I don't really use it anymore because um, I have ra I have real rasp rasp and files now so the first thing I'm gonna do is get this drawer empty and then figure out what I'm going to do next. So, I'll bring you back in a minute. Okay, so I pulled everything that was in that drawer out, and I grabbed a couple other ones that I didn't have in the drawer but should go in that drawer. Uh, these are Riffler files, and are they Rifler files or Riffler files? I think they're Riffler files and raspy things, and just some interesting little Riffler rasp sets that kind of belong in this rasp area. And uh, the other part of this is my bench is here, but the drawer this stuff was all in is behind you another probably 12 feet from me right now. It's kind of over there. It's not where I would use my chisels most on the bench. There's a drawer right over there. It's a step and a half away. Why not use that? So I've pulled that drawer out, and it's very similar in dimension to the other drawer. It is 21 and a half deep, 21, 20 and a half wide, and three and a half deep. So that, I think, the depth might be a waste. I'm not sure yet. Um, might even be best to, uh, that'd be weird. Um, yeah, the, the thought I was catching on it was I could potentially make a second drawer and split this in half 
but that's starting to get pretty wasteful because you got to have oh, I would take up over an inch and then I'd look at I might get an inch and a half inch and a yeah maybe an inch and a half deep drawer maybe an inch and a quarter deep drawer maybe only an inch that's not going to work for these bigger chisels so the three and a half is it three and a half what did I just say three and a half inch deep drawer it's going to be all right but I don't find that no nope, that's not true I was going to say I don't find that I use the rasps over here as, or the files over here as much but that's not true I use the rasps over here a fair bit and because I use the rasps I also use the files once I'm done with the rasps so it makes sense to have all this over here now and this just happens to be a nice little empty drawer that I haven't filled up yet so the design criteria is I think I want to give chisels priority and uh, looks like looks like this one's my longest, this little eighth inch mortise chisel. It's eleven. So let's give a foot, a foot to chisels, right? Now the question I'm gonna have to have is how space conscious do I have to be? I need room for growth, for sure, because I'm always adding chisels and tools and things. But I also need ease of access and space conservation. I need the ability to store all this crap. So my longer file, which no, I know has no handle, 14 and a half inches. This little sure form is a bit longer than that too. I think it's probably seven, it's 16 and a half inches. So what I'm thinking, maybe, maybe this will do. Chisels up front. Chisels up front, rasps in the back, files and rasps in the back, maybe, maybe. Um, so if we're talking, like, so the next piece I thought of is if I put them at an angle a little, there's this big old wedge of space down here that's not being used. Would there be value in having a flip up cavity I can get to this and then set it back down. I'm not sure. I have a feeling if I did that I'd put stuff under there that would keep keep it from sitting down right. Um, the other consideration is I want to not obscure the edge so that I know because I bought a couple of these uh, these ones, these quarter inch ones. I've got three quarter inch chisels because I plan someday when I get around to it, uh, I plan to skew these two. Because when you're doing hand cut dovetails, having some, some skewed chisels does definitely help get down into the down into the corners of a half blind dovetail. Super, super helpful skewed chisels they are. But does tilting does a tilting cavity have value or merit at all? Do I care? Um, I am uncertain. Because I do hate the idea of wasting that space. I don't know. I don't know. So, the big thing of this little top thing that this top panel thing one it sucks just that it's free floating and you got to take it completely out to get at the stuff underneath but secondly it's hard to get it to sit flat because the things you put in don't necessarily sit flat or what goes in changes it limits what you can put in there and you've got to be and I think it's more annoying to me than uh, than valuable so what I think I will do is let's just put them all in and see how well they line up. So the drawer is just wide enough to get all my chisels in. Just. There's an extra three quarters of an inch on this side, maybe that, five eighths, yeah. And if they're even remotely held apart, they're gonna be even harder to get in. Uh, yeah, I don't have any growth, no room for growth. Not sure I like that. But 
I can also say that if there is room for growth, it's not going to be buying more beater chisels. It's going to be better chisels that go in. So maybe, maybe the answer to that, maybe the answer to that is when I do expand, these guys get tossed into a coffee can somewhere or something. Because those are truly just for around the house, might be nails in it, kind of glue scraper type things. I don't use them for the good stuff. Um, but they need to be uh, easily accessible enough to go reach for when the time comes that I need them. So that gives me those mm -hmm. things. I think I can do, for now I think I can live with that level of room for growth. That's a lot of chisels. That should be enough for a while. I haven't added any in a while. The only thing I can see adding really are going to be probably mortise chisels. Um, and maybe some more skewy type stuff. But the thing that I'm concerned about is someday I'm sure I'll end up carving. And then carving gouges. But that'll be another drawer. I'll just, <laughs> I'll just take another drawer. Um, all right. And then we've got all the files and rasps. Boy, this is going to be... So, two real long files. This just doesn't... I don't want them overlapping things. Because overlapping means you'll bump them into each, uh, into each other. They will, they will collide with one another. And I've got three of these things. And, yeah, I'm not sure I'm going to have enough room in one drawer for everything. Well, maybe. So one thing I can say, I think, chisels, I don't think I want to go multi-tier, but for the files, there's a bunch of things in here that I don't go to very often that would be fine if they lived under something. And that, that would be perfectly okay. Uh, maybe these rolls aren't bad for these things just to keep them together. They don't take up a lot of space when they're rolled up like this. Maybe this is the best form factor for them. Not sure. Not sure if I'm gonna like that or what. But that way, if I just give myself like a little inch and a quarter little cubby, I can throw the least used stuff, the less often used, less, least oft. The most useful ones, the ones that are used the most on top, and then and then put the stuff like this. That'll just barely fit anything I had in mind. Yeah, it's going to be snug, actually. <clears throat> yeah, I'm starting to form an idea of how I'm going to organize all this stuff now that I'm laying things in there. Um, there are some files I don't use that much. I don't use the SureForm that much. So let's say that one ends up down inside of this. Like that. And I don't use the bread knife all that often. That can live in there. The microplane, oh, well, this thing can go in there. I don't use it much. The microplanes. I do, I tend to go to these needle files a fair bit, but I'm not sure I've got enough space to put them on top. So the trick is whatever I put down here then has to be a fair, a fairly easy, unobtrusive method of reaching them. That probably means... I wonder if it wouldn't be wise to have the top for the file slide forward so I can get to the stuff behind it, push it this way, and have a pin to hold it in place so that the chisels are never covered up on purpose. Or by accident. They're never covered up by accident. Then, I would say the microplane and its three, I 
can actually cut this down and make something smaller. Could go in here as well. Yeah, if I can cut that down to quarter, a little less of its width. Yeah, this might, that might work. And then the rest of these files can get into a, a tray on top that'll have full support. That might work. Um, I'm thinking, I'm still thinking sideways is my best um, this way, lengthwise this way, because then the really long files won't cover up the chisels unnecessarily. Okay, so these guys have been relegated to that space. I think I've established a space. Yeah, I think I've established a space and what will go in it. And then, so now, just for imagination's sake, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, what did I say, 10 inches for these things? 11 and a quarter. So I was gonna give myself a foot, probably. So if I gave myself, let's take this thing. If I have to, I can rearrange it, but. It's 11 and uh, 3 eighths. So this one is just about 11. Yeah, it's just over 11. So, okay, we'll use a thin piece of plywood or something there, a thin strip of wood at the whatever, 11 and a quarter mark or 11 and a half mark inside of this. And then whatever gets in there gets in there, and whatever can fit will fit. Um, how tall do I absolutely have to have? So I've got three and a half there. It looks to me like if I got an inch and a half above this, all the files and rasp, all the files and rasps would fit. Inch and a half would be plenty, I think. So then that means I would have a little rail along here and that would leave me about a two inch gap two inch cavity on top yes that would give me a two, or on the bottom a two inch cavity underneath for all of that stuff okay I can live with that that's so then I'll do a, a little um, notched you know kind of like what this thing does a little notched thing for each chisel that'll hold each edge up a little all the way across and everything will, I mean aside from this shorty, should be safe from slipping into the, you know, we'll make it fairly wide. Um, so it should keep it from slamming around. What I'm thinking I might do, I wonder if there's some value in this. This thing is going to evolve. This little rack for the chisels is going to evolve. I'm wondering, I'm starting to have this this contemplate this thought that instead of perfectly sized notches for that size chisel since my collection will evolve over time it might be beneficial to not have slots so much as maybe thinking dowels, I'm thinking little pins and do sort of a, because uh, I can, on the CNC, I can route out a board and perforate the crap out of it with various little dots all over it, little holes in all, in all the spaces so that I can tailor the fit for each chisel perfectly. I think I'm going to do that. I think I like that idea. It may or may not be viable, we'll see. But that lets me, you know, if I do a board that's, well, we're gonna come out 11-ish. If my board stopped at seven, that's a four inch wide board. That would cover every chisel that I've got. I think I'm gonna do that. I think I like that plan. It means I'm gonna have a very strange looking little perforated board right here, but 
that's okay with me. So for files, I am thinking that files can go in. Boy, there is not a ton of room. I think we might stand these up. These may get stood up so that they take up less horizontal space. Maybe a quarter inch apart so I can get them out. And then I've got all these guys with shitty handles. They can go in. I may, because this actually needs to be the least, um, the least pigeonholing because none of these files are worth a shit. These are Harbor Freight, this whole set. These are not bad. They're Nicholson's. They're not American, but they're Nicholson's. They're better than... They're better than Harbor Freight, but only just. So these all will get replaced. This one, I don't use much. It's got a cool little Bacote hand, handle. Um, and then this one tops me off for files. Not sure what I'll do there yet. Um, and then I've got a rasp, which I may not sure what I'll do about you yet. I may put these guys. I'm not sure yet. Got to figure out which way I'm going to have these things sitting. The whole point is to keep them from slapping into each other. And then I've got these little guys that really don't have homes yet. It's too long to go that way. Yeah. So this whole collection will not uh, will not be static. It's got a ton of evolution on its hands. It's coming up someday. I'll end up getting more. But I think, so those will be on a shelf that'll slide. All the other stuff will go underneath. I'll have to work out the arrangement in that little box I put together. But I think, I think we have a bit of a plan. So if, what I'm going to do first is model up that. Maybe I'll hold off on modeling that perf thing up. I'm going to do this divider because I know where this is going. Um, and then I can work on a rail so that we can keep those things separate. This divider will also serve as a support for the tray that can slide around. And I think that's going to get us a good start. So I will bring you back when I figure out what material I'm going to use and then we'll come back. I've got a piece of poplar that's a lot straighter. It's just a bit longer than I need. We're going to use this. We'll cut it to rough length, about 23 inches long. We only need 21 and a half, but 23 gives me room for snipe or anything else when I go to resaw. This thing is 45, almost 45 inches long. So yeah, we'll do, actually if we did 22, we'd split it in half and I'd have two boards. Let's do 22, it's 44 and 3 quarters, so let's do 22 and a quarter. Still longer than I need, so we'll set up the miter saw and get that going. And we're going to set up for, we'll do 22 and a quarter, because I think, do I have any sort of a crappy end? No, I don't. My ends look good. Okay, we'll do a quick semi-square up cut real fast, and then... 22 and a quarter it'll be. Just, this is rough. This is way oversized, which is fine. Um, your protection for me and for you. Not a bad guess, that was pretty much right on half. All right, so now what I'm gonna do, you, these are pretty well flat enough. I think I can just start sawing. Yeah, they're straight and flat enough. We can deal with this, we'll just start sawing. Okay, I'm gonna slice these off. I think I'll use the big band saw here. So we'll get set up for that. And we're gonna center on this, so set my fence. Boy, that looks really close. I'm gonna turn the saw on and just do a little tick right on the end and then I'll flip it over and see how close to center we are. So. 
little hair and protection for me. <clears throat> Did you notice? I turned on the dust collector, but the, the hose is on that saw. Derp. It's a little cloudy in here. Not bad though. And so we're gonna, we're gonna lift a bit and get it off the, we're gonna stop before we hit a quarter, I'm sure. And one of these is a little thick in the middle, thick in the middle. It's going to be a dissin, and this one's pretty thin by comparison. I might just, I might just leave this. These three, this one's pretty heavy duty in the middle. Yeah, those two are pretty thick. Those two are fairly thin. Actually, those are just the other sides of the boards, okay. So what I'm thinking I will do, just get them flat. Just get them close. That's fine. Just start palaning away. It's gonna get loud again, so ear protection for me, ear protection for you. Okay, so we got three at one thickness and one a bit thinner, which is fine. It's only like a 30-second or so thinner, if that even. Um, but try as I might, there's a little bit of snipe despite my train feeding of things. So what I'm going to do is just run them through the drum sander real quick and get rid of that. Because it bugs me enough to want rid of it. So that's what we'll do. We'll get rid of it. Yeah, they're all there. They're all decent enough thickness. And I'm going to take the thinnest one. I've lost it. I don't know which one it is now. They are close enough that it doesn't really matter much. But we're going to. I'm going to take the thinnest one and cut it. I can't get two inches out of each one though. Dang. Okay. So it's three and a half. Let's do inch and a half inch and three quarters, whatever. So I'm going to take one of these and split it for the rails on the sides. Yeah, that'll work. We'll just do one of each and split. Okay. So we've got our saw. I could do this on the small one, I guess. Yeah, let's do it on the small one. Even though the big saw's already set up, it's okay. Small one it is. So we'll get the fence. Now, this is just a shop made fence, nothing fancy. Proof that it doesn't take gimmicks. Okay, so this, I'm gonna go for, let's see, let's find, let's find center here. Three and a half on the nose, so it's gonna be an inch and three quarters down the center. So we'll just use that as a spot. Drop this. Get around. 
around in that area somewhere should be fairly close. Not really. Who's there? Good, I can bring guides down. So real quick, we're just gonna pop it one. Took my line away, flip it over. Looks good to me. Let's go real quick. Sorry, I muted. Uh, I marked them for the length, is all. That's what's been done there. Let me get the camera over here. All right, and now I'm not gonna bother with a stop at all. We're gonna flip that up. We'll just put our board on and use my handy dandy laser mark where the line is, line up with the mark. That'll work. I don't know which side this was, but yeah, that'll go down inside and that'll be fine. It's over here too, so it's okay either way. Dot does not have to be a very precise thing. It truly does not. Okay. And now this one can go over here. Yeah, that'll do. I'm gonna flip it around so that the no, flip it this way. This way works better. So I'm just going to slap this in with a couple of small short staples. I think. Yeah, just a couple. Of, oh, I see. We've got ourselves a. Yeah, we'll just throw a couple of staples on. And that'll be the height of my inner, uh, inner, inner side. Let's throw a couple of spraying clamps on it. Oh, they barely reach. Um, we'll go with something a bit longer then. Maybe, maybe I've got something a bit longer. Careful. Careful with your jokes. Ah, I'll just do it by hand. All right, so I've got those rails. What I'm gonna do is I'll bring you in, because you can't see it at the moment. All right, this ain't no fine furniture project, so I'm just going to nail these on real fast. Nothing to it. Every six or so inches, I suppose. Just enough. The nails are exactly at the depth of this uh, shelf, so I'm going to back it up like this it helps helps keep it from blowing out at least Come Ooh, watch your watch your light fixtures everybody safety first there that is on may need some more of these we'll see but now we've basically got our runners to have things slide upon I'll wax those so that things slide easiest <clears throat> now I think I'll cut one more the same the same width which is still set on the bandsaw to do this cross line here yeah we'll do that next